Hello there and welcome back to this Spring Plus Angular course. Today we're going to be starting our second unit, which is going to be Spring. Now, as I said in the previous episode, we're going to spend very a little uh, a very small amount of time on Spring, especially in this unit. So really the thing that's going to take up most of our time is going to be just database setup and controllers. We're also going to be going over OAuth as well. That's going to be very important to understand since that is actually how we're going to be securing our Angular applications. Anyway, so now that we got that done, let's go ahead and actually go ahead and uh, get our Spring project. So we're going to be using Spring Boot. Um, if you don't know Spring Boot, it's essentially Spring, just, you know, with less configuration. So it's difficult not to know it. Um, um, so Spring itself is designed, is designed to remove boilerplate as compared to just um, Enterprise Java. And uh, Spring Boot is designed to remove the boilerplate in Spring. And so that's how, you know, how it works. Anyway. So let's go and take a look here. Uh, we can go ahead and um, go to start.spring.io. All right. And uh, there we go. So this is just something called a Spring Initializer. This will allow us to create a pre-made Spring application for us. So we're just going to generate a Maven project with Java, Spring Boot 2.0. Um, all right, 2.0 is out. Um, there we go. And uh, let's see where we're going to get. We're going to get web. We're going to get security. We actually need to do OAuth, Cloud OAuth too. We're going to do security as well. Um, let's see, what else? Let's do JPA. Um, that'll include Hibernate for us. Let's do, de whoops. Um, no, we need web. We need dev tools. There we go. Uh, Cloud OAuth 2. Let's do also my uh, MySQL. There we go. Um, and I think, I think that's all. We can always add in other dependencies as needed. Later on, so this is, this is just the initial dependency that it'll include for us. Anyway, so let's put the clue, the group at com, eduonix, um, okay, and then the uh, artifact is going to be um, project backend. So this is going to be the backend for a project. So we're going to call this project backend. All right, there we go. And let's let's, let's make this a lowercase one. All right, there we go. Um, now uh, we can actually switch to the full version here, and uh, here we can, we have a ton more configuration options. We can and we can see all of the total. Um, all of the total, what? All of the total what? <laughs> All of the total um, options for dependencies we have. There we go. I forgot the word there. Um, options for dependencies we have that we can actually include. So again, there are a ton um, that we can totally select here. But uh, for now, I think this is all that we need. And again, we can always add them as needed later on. All right. So um, let's also change the description. This is going to be um, this, um, the back end for our Angular project. All right, and let's do Java version 9, because uh, why not at this point? Um, and all right, there we go. So let's generate project. And it's actually going to go ahead and download to our downloads folder. So let me go ahead and open that up. All right, and there we go. So this is the uh, folder that I actually downloaded. So when I click generate project, this is what it downloaded to my downloads folder. And if you notice, it's actually just a Maven project. So we have a palm.xml here. So this is just uh, the file with all of our dependencies. And then we have this SRC with just with our actual file. So that, this is the uh, class path. So anyway, now we can go and op I'll go ahead and open up Eclipse. So let's uh, Eclipse. There we go. Give it a second here. Still from October 2017. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and create a new workspace. Let's just call it um, Angular Project Backend. Why not? There we go. All right, and launch. Let's give it a second here. We're getting that spinny wheel. Um, all right, moving on. We're not really moving on. We're waiting for it. There we go. Okay, and now we have got it uh, generated. So let me go ahead and make this window full size here. Uh, it's always a problem because I have to, rec uh, well, I mean, I don't have to, but I record these videos in 16 by 9 format, but my laptop screen is in, I think, I think it's 3 by 4 format. So it's, it's always difficult to get these windows precisely aligned. Anyway, so, okay, so um, let's not show this at startup. Let's close this. And I was going to do file, open projects from file system. And now we're going to actually go into open, um, go to open what we downloaded. So here I have, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? There we go, project backend. So this is what we downloaded. And we can just open it up, give it a second. It's going to sense that it's a Maven project. And now we can finally do finish. All right, there we go. Let's give it a second here to install all the necessary dependencies. So it's going to do that. Let me go and um, skip to where it actually finishes. There we go. It's done. So now in our project, we should see the uh, standard Maven project structure. So we can now go ahead and uh, open up this project backend application. And if you don't know Spring Boot, then this is going to be seem kind of strange to you. 
what's going on here. But essentially, just this at Spring Boot application will make it so that um, well, uh, it's gonna run this main file here. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not gonna run this main file. This Spring Boot application actually contains inside itself a few a few annotations. Um, so if we go and do whoops, all right, let's give it a second here to download. Um, so this annotation is actually just contains the at target. Well, I mean that's for every annotation. Uh, we have um, at Spring Boot configuration, at enable auto configuration, and at component scan as well. So this is, this is, these are the three uh, main annotations that are included here. And uh, we can actually go ahead and take a look here. If we run this as a Java project, it's going to go ahead and um, actually run our Spring Boot application. So let's run this as, I'm sorry, not a Java project, we're going to run it as a Java file here. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why uh, my um, computer, uh, there we go. So generally speaking, if we were, if this were to be a Spring project, then we would have to run the entire project on server. But since this is, this is not a Spring project, this is just a Spring Boot project, we can actually run this as a Java application. And what that will do is it will actually go ahead and start up an instance of Tomcat. And we don't even have to have Tomcat installed on our laptop. It'll actually um, take Tomcat in for us. So um, I believe, so right here, uh, I did know that we were most likely going to get this error. Or, or or not. Yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, we did get this error since we don't have our data source. Um, our, our data source configured. And since we actually included JPA, it's not going to allow us to, it, needed, it needs a data source to start. So we can go ahead and actually go to, um, uh, where is this, where is this, where is this data JPA right here? Just comment this out and just start it up again. So we're going to start it up um, as a Spring Boot application, and that's going to go in and do that. So let's give it a second here. We don't want Eclipse Air reporting. All right, um, and there we go. So as you can see, it's already starting, and there we go. So started uh, project backend application in 6.237 seconds. And that is actually all for today's episode. So we've essentially got our project, um, you know, downloaded into our IDE, we can now start actually configuring this project. And a quick, uh, quick note, if you are going to be doing any controllers right now, it's actually not going to work because since we have the Spring Security dependency, it's actually going to go ahead and actually ask for a um, security authorization provider, which we don't have right now. So yeah, um, don't if you try to add a controller, it's actually not going to let you go to that controller. Just maybe, maybe you're going to try to add it in between this video and the next video, and uh, I don't know you get that error. So yeah, it's not going to work right now. We have to actually set it up. Anyway, next time we're going to be going over why we're actually going to be using Spring plus Angular. We're essentially just going to be going over how how great Spring is and how great Angular is and how great they work together. So that's going to be very fun as well. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll see you next time. So soon.